Hi everyone, welcome to our bite-sized PD about online resources for secondary ELA. Our learning intentions for today are that you're going to learn about some online resources for teaching novels so that you can supplement your lesson plans and you'll know you'll have it when you explore teaching books and common lit. Those are the two online resources we'll be covering today. Really quickly before we get started, I want you to remember that all of the um, materials that are found in teaching books and common lit fall under teacher selected materials in the instructional materials policy. Both of these websites have lesson plans and common lit has an entire year's worth of curriculum. However, for us to do a full curriculum adoption, it takes several years and um, we would have to accept everything all of the resources that fall under these two websites and they're constantly adding new resources so it's not feasible for us to have these adopted as curriculums so please review them using the selection criteria before using them in your classes and i've linked the instructional materials policy here for you so first let's talk about what teaching books is teaching books is um, a resource through utah's online library that will include resources for teaching novels. At looking at their site, they have lesson plans, unit plans, activities, book guides, videos, audio excer excerpts, author interviews, book trailers, vocabulary lists, reflections, rubrics, links to outside resources and websites, award lists, games, and text complexity measures. And the text complexity measures can help you when you're filling out novel approval applications. So to go there, you're going to go to Utah's online library. If you're accessing this from a district wi from the district Wi-Fi, you don't need to log in. However, if you're accessing it from home, you're going to log in with the username online and the password inspire, and then choose middle school or high school. So I'm actually going to, rather than going through the slides, I'm going to go through and show you this. So here we have um, the middle school or high school. Since I'm high school, I'll choose high school. And then you can scroll down, and there are so many good things here, like Scribble. But today we're going to talk about teaching books. And this is a collection of resources that have been curated by this company. Um, that. UEN or the Utah State Board of Education has approved as a resource, but remember, we're still going to verify and read everything that we teach. So a couple things you can search by title. So let's put in Animal Farm. And here we go. So we can see that Animal Farm has 51 total resources. It's on eight state lists. You can look at a book resume. You can look at the text complexity here. So it falls within these grade bands. You can see here all these different measures, but Lexile is probably what we're most familiar with. Now remember, on the MAP test, even though it gives us a raw RIT score, every student is given a text, uh, like a Lexile band, and that band is where they can read independently. It will tell you your qualitative measures and then reader task considerations and grades in which it's assigned. So that's all good and this can really help you with those novel applications. Let's go back to the book and look at some of the resources that they have here. They'll kind of do like high level the most important or most used up here. We have an audio excerpt of book trailer and I'm going to talk about this discover like books in a minute. So they have actually created their own online resources where you can actually do a reflection, go in, create a lesson, create a PDF that's already um, built for you and then you're plugging in what you want. They have resources about the author, book guides, activities, and lessons. And this is usually the section that has the most um, in it. So teacher guides, movie, like squealer speech lesson, like just tons and tons of resources. And these are all mixed, like 
videos. So if you're looking for 60 second recap from part one, part two, symbols. And what's nice is I can go on YouTube and search these things, but while I'm researching the book and while I'm preparing for lessons, I can just do all this at this one time. It's all in one place. Book readings are excerpts, audio excerpts. They have book trailers, which is a great way to pique students' interest in books. Um, vocabulary lists for you, and then book adaptation, book and adaptation websites. So if you're looking for those sorts of things. Now you'll notice here it also has games. Oops, the cover jigsaw and a word search, just kind of something fun. Um, that you can do. So that's the first way you can search is by book. You can also come up over here to for educators. And now we have a whole other list of resources. You can log in using your CSD Docs account. So log in using the, uh, the Google uh, extension. And they have <coughs> standards connections. They're not really standards. Like when you click on English language arts, it doesn't show you standards, but it shows you connections to English language arts. Um, <clears throat> it has um, English language learner connections, um, multi-leveled lesson. This is really good if you're looking for titles that want to have, that have different levels for differentiation within your classroom, different reading levels. So I can come in here and search by genre. There's a toolkit for text complexity to help you understand it. If you want to teach about author's purpose, they have a whole collection just about author's purpose, comprehension, and world languages. So that's the first set of resources they have for educators. They have, um, actually, I'm going to come back up here. You can create custom reading lists. So they have the Beehive Book Awards already loaded in for us, but you can create a new list. And I want you to imagine if you're coming up on a unit and you want to teach um, about like immigration and refugee stories, you could create a new list and start gathering books, add them to the list. And then students, you can share your list and students can actually go in and see all of the books, they could watch book trailers, they could explore the books, and then choose which book they want to read, either in student choice reading or for literature circles. So I'm going to step out here for a second and show you an example of this. I used to love, I used to teach Esperanza Rising, but it's not really a high school appropriate level book. But I want to teach um, a unit about like immigrant, immigrant and refugee stories. So I can come over to this page and I can do discover like books. And it gives you all of these different categories that they have like books with. So I'm actually gonna choose immigrant and refugee. And it, you can see here, I have 1,097 book results, right? Cause I don't know every book that is a refugee story. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna filter this for ninth through 12th grade. And now I have 416 titles. So I can actually come in and do, I actually want only recent award winners. And now I have 33 books. And if I want to add the book to a book list, you can do add multiple titles or come in and select each individual and add them to a book list. Oh, I read this book, it's good. So, that's one way we can create book lists for student choice reading or literature circles, or if you're trying to find new books. So let's go back. They have this great thing, book promotion, where you can do <coughs> create QR codes. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. QR codes for shelf talkers, which is what they use in the library. But if we come here, you can actually choose book trailers. So I want you to imagine you're in your classroom and it's student choice reading, or you're in the commons area and it's student choice reading and you want kids to get to know all of the books, they can go around and scan the QR codes and watch the book trailers. Or you could just load them in 
yourself if, if students don't have devices that can read the QR codes, but it's really cool to kind of create that interest. So I would just come in here, choose book trailers, and now I can search, right? I can actually add these titles. All these titles have book, book trailers for them. And then I can create the QR codes. Next we have um, teaching ideas. I'm gonna let you explore that. Diverse books, if you're looking for books from certain cultures you or cultural experiences, here they are. If you're looking for diverse books, books by subject, like I want sports, I wanna do a sports, it will give me lists of books. If I'm looking for grade level, uh, cultural experience, genre, curricular areas, grade levels, I can search that way. And you can do, you don't have to put on all those filters, just one. Um, book lists, thematic book lists, if you're looking for them. Um, and this, this is on, a, this is for the libraries. <laughs> now you can do a professional exploration. And I love this because if I'm looking for new books, if I'm looking for specific genres, like we are moving into a, hist I want to do historical fiction unit, then it brings me a book list that's all historical fiction that I can then filter for my appropriate grade level. Okay, um, and then these are for libraries. So let's explore what students can do. So students can log in, um, just go to the website, the Utah Online Library, and access this as well. They have games, read-alongs, videos, those sorts of things. But what I really want to focus on is students can build their own reading list just the way teachers can, but this, find books you'll like. A lot of teachers are doing independent reading now, and one of the biggest struggles is getting students to find a book that they want to read. So <clears throat> I was just at Brighton High School's library and the teacher had asked the librarian to gather um, books that were similar to books that the students liked. <coughs> so I was trying to help a student find a book that she liked and she liked Fault in Our Stars, right? And so a student could come on here, they could do discover like books and come in and go, well, maybe what I really liked about it was that there was kind of like, it's kind of sad, but there was a termin terminally ill person in this. And maybe that student really connected to that. We don't know with their family life, right? But now here are all these books that have kind of that same theme. Or maybe she's like, oh, I really like the author. I'm going to try John Green. And here are resources about John Green. I can come down to books. And then I can start adding them to my own reading list that students can come in like, oh, that Paper Towns, that looks interesting. And they can actually just watch the book trailer from right here. And if they like it, then they can add it to their list and they just add it right here. So I think that's really exciting to help students find new books and also to help us as teachers find new books, um, especially if you're trying to modernize your classroom or create more student choice reading or literature circles. So this is our first resource, teaching books. So let's go, I just wanna make sure I didn't miss anything. See, we talked about all of these. We talked about this, students. Okay, let's go to Common Lit. Oh, I didn't change this link. I will fix this link. I believe this link will still go to Common Lit. Let's try it. Yeah, it does. I'll fix it on the slides. Um, so it's you're gonna go to commonlit.org. Now, when you first log in, um, it's going to look a little bit different. Up here, you're going to see a sign up and a login link. So 
when you sign up, be sure to use your canyonsdistrict.org account because that will recognize you as a teacher. And it will probably ask your district and school and those sorts of things. So there are two things that we're going to cover today, the library and the curriculum. First, if you go to the library, it has um, thousands of texts. <laughs> you can search by author, keyword, uh, title, or you can come down and search by grade, genre, standards, and these are the common core standards, content types, right? Or there's other filters that you can show, like maybe I just want things within a certain lexile, or I want to focus on these literary devices, and they have so much, so many more. So even like plot devices and flashback. Um, themes and then languages English and Spanish but they have other translation options that I'll show you in a minute what I also like is you can look by book pairings and text sets so let's choose book pairings and oh Animal Farms right here I'm gonna use Animal Farm and so it has these texts that pair with Animal Farm and what I really like is it says when and how to use or to use this paired text, right? Conformity, the third wave, the Russian Revolution. And then I can actually click on this and it will take me to that text. So the other great thing about Common Lit is that with their text, you have a downloadable PDF. You can favorite this and create your collections. You can do student previews. You can do a read aloud. You can annotate this. Now, for uh, teacher annotations, it doesn't keep your highlights and annotations once you're off that screen. But if you're modeling for students, you can do this and type. So you can highlight and type. It has um, translations. Not every language, but quite a few. And then, let me move myself over here. <laughs> um, we have guiding, we have the overview. We have, um, which goes over like the main ideas and those sorts of things. Guiding questions. This is a mode that you can use with your students that, um, they'll be prompted to answer comprehension questions as you go. Now, we don't pay for the district license because it is an entire curriculum um, that we would need to get approved, but you can um, do this manually by clicking on that button. And then as you see these questions, this is where these are definitions, but then as you see like Q1, it will open up these. So this, these are questions you can ask verbally or have students answer as they're reading. There are assessment questions and discussion questions as well. All of that. Plus, if we come back up to the top, let me move this again, they have paired texts. So if we're looking for paired texts with a novel that we already use, we have all of these. Oh, total control in North Korea, that's interesting. There's related media, and then the answer keys for um, the text. So there's a lot within each individual lesson if you're searching by text. Let's go back home. And then targeted lessons, if you're looking for um, let's say I want to focus on point of view and I'm going to choose 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. Now I know like here's analyzing author's point of view in this article. 
I make video games and I won't let my daughters play them. Oh, that's interesting. That's a good, that'd be good for argument. Um, it kind of does an agenda here. And I love that you could just project this if you wanted. And it walks you through the lesson. There's a warm up. Um, and then a video to get their brains a going, the text, and it's, it's, and then assessment. It has like, it's set out for you. You can come up here and it shows you how do I teach this because this is in a different format than the, just a text. And you can download the materials, the teacher and the student. You can also download, um, or it links to Google um, Slides. And you can, let's make a copy so I can just show you this. It has the actual slides that you could use in your class. And you can just edit them as you want. So if I was doing this, because we don't pay for the students to have accounts, I could use this and they could answer these questions in their writer's notebooks, right? And of course it has the answer key. So that's really exciting to explore. And um, in the high school instructional guides and on our Canvas pages, we have linked common lit resources by novel um, to help support you. Then we have this 360 curriculum. This is an entire year's worth of curriculum for you if you would like it. So I'm gonna come to 10th grade and the first unit is coming of age. Great, it says it's gonna take five to seven weeks. It has an overview page. It, I can see all the text that we're going to read, their Lexile in a short summary. And I can do, I can see what the writing lessons are going to be. There's a unit guide that will walk you through all of that. Um, I'm gonna come back to lesson materials. Under professional development, because we don't pay for the curriculum, you can't, like, these are all locked, but you can see the how-to guidance, and they have documents like how to integrate vocabulary instruction into this, how to annotate effectively, and this is something that I could read as a teacher to inform myself if I'm curious. Let's go to lesson materials. What's great is they have these all laid out, and you'll see they say, this is essential, it will take 20 minutes. This one is optional, 20 minutes, right? So we can kind of see recommended 60 minutes. Um, so we can see how we can fit that within our different schedules. So in here, when you do the unit introduction, it will give you the slide deck, the teacher, student copy, the reference sheet that the students need for this and the word wall. So it has all of these things and then once we get into reading lessons it will do preview or assign and it takes me through that same page like I had with the um, targeted lessons I can also come up here and if I'm like oh I don't like this format I can come up Go back to the library, search safety and numbers, here's the text, and now it's in this other format where I can download the PDF, I can look at paired text, related media, I can look at it this way if this way makes more sense for you. Okay, let's see, did I catch everything? The library, yes, okay. If you have any questions, please contact me or Scott. We are happy to answer those questions. Um, but we feel like these are really high quality resources that you can use to help enhance your instruction.